Hey guys, welcome to Oregon State Beavers Baseball Dynasty. This is our second to last episode before the end of the regular season. We're going to do a little recruiting action here at the first of this one. Pack Feinberg is a 30th ranked player, a starting pitcher or a relief pitcher, possibly a closer. He's ranked number 30 overall in the country and he has interest in us. So we're going to scout him a little bit. And uh, Sean Farnsworth, a right fielder, outfielder, also with a high level of interest for us. Angelo, Angelo Sorio, ranked 102. He's overall a 72 pitcher. He doesn't have as much interest in us, but we're going to go ahead and scout him and see if he's somebody that we'd like to take a look at. Matt Metzger, a left fielder third baseman, ranked 105, a 72 overall. We're going to send some scouts, see if we can get a better fill for Matt Metzger. Steve Katerba, a first baseman, third baseman. Overall, 71, a rank 119 overall. And we're going to request some film on him and just get a fill for him. Robert Kelly, starting pitcher. We're going to do the same with him, and we will uh, get reports back and see how it looks. Request some tape on Jacob Lindgren as well. He's a first baseman. And Jake Ordaz, or Dawes, I'm not sure how you say that. Uh, starting pitcher, relief pitcher, we're going to take a look at him as well. So on to the schedule. We near the end of the season. We have three games here against the Washington State Cougars. Two on the road at Iowa, and then we're uh, back on the West Coast in Los Angeles to take on UCLA. The first game against Washington State, we quick manage it, and we come away with a 10-7 win. In that game, Renee Rogers was 2-3. for three. W Scored four runs on the day. Maloney was 2-3. for three. Swayden went 0-5. Washburn one for four, Banwert went two for five with two RBIs, Shinjo went two for three, Tonko went one for five, Markle the DH was 0 for, and Ari Riesland was one for three. Uh, Washburn, Maloney, Banwert had doubles, Ari Riesland who had his second home run of the year. Shinjo had two runs batted in, Riesland, Maloney had two, Banwert had two, and Sweden had one. And Renee Rogers picked up his 13th stolen base of the season. There was an error on Maloney as well. Pitching-wise, Fossum went five innings, giving up 11 hits but only one run. Had three strikeouts. Hamilton went two and two-thirds. He gave up 10 hits in two and two-thirds innings and gave up six runs. Not good, but we did hold on for the victory. Elsewhere, UCLA beat Arizona 5 to nothing. Cal beat Stanford 5 to 3. That's big news for us. We beat Washington State. And UW beat USC 2-1, so that puts us all alone in first place in the Pac-10 standings. Stanford 11-8 in the conference is one game behind us. As we get set for game number two of this three-game series with the Washington Cougars, and we're going to go to the ninth inning of this one, the bottom of the ninth, all tied up at five. With two outs, Jeff Maloney at the plate with Riesland on first, and Jeff Maloney's going to hit the walk-off home run to give us a 7-5 victory in this big game against the Washington State Cougars. As we only have four conference games left on the season, and it's a tight race that we're involved in. Rodgers went 1-6, for six, Maloney went 2-6 for six with two RBIs, Nick Swayden 4-5, for five, Washburn 2-4, for four, Banwert 1-2, for two, Shinjo 2-4, two for four, scored a run, Tomko was 1-5, for five, Markle 2-5, for five, Ari Riesland was 0-2 but did draw three walks. Uh, Shinjo and Banwert hit doubles. Maloney and Tomko hit home runs. They're fourth and sixth, respectively. Jeff Maloney, Nick Swayden, Rogers, Tomko, and Markle all drove in runs. And Ari Riesland with his second stolen base of the year. On the mound for us, Morgan went seven innings, giving up six hits, three runs. All of them earned three walks and ten strikeouts. Conley pitched one-third of an inning, gave up three hits and two runs. He struggled since coming back from injury, but Castaneda gets the win at a 7-5 victory. UCLA beat Arizona 8-5. UW over USC again 7-5. And Stanford beat Cal in 16 innings. So Stanford is hanging around right behind us at a half a game back. They are 13-8. We're 13-7. Arizona State is 12-9. And, and at this point, it looks like Oregon State, Stanford, and Arizona State are the only teams left in the Pac-10 race. 
with four games remaining. The final game against the Washington State Cougars, Perone versus Harville from Goss Field in Corvallis. And we get this one underway here in Oregon. It's Washington State and Oregon State. For this one, the pitching matchup, Kyle Harville, 8-5 with a 1.90 ERA, goes for us. He's given up 120 hits and 132 innings and has 98 strikeouts. Very good year for Harville. Alan Perrone, 5-10 with a 5.16 ERA, goes for Washington State. Here's Chris Lansford, the son of Carney Lansford, former Oakland Athletic. All right, I just made that up, but I'm sticking with it. Swayden oh. makes the catch out in left field, and we are in the fifth inning here as we just jump straight ahead with no score yet. Both pitchers are dealing in this one. Top of the fifth, 0-1 count. Here's the grounder to Banward at short. Banward on to Shinjo at first for the out. Here's Micah Gloss with two outs, and Gloss is going to swing over the top of a splitter for strike one. Second pitch, 91 mile an hour four seamer in there for strike two, and then a breaking ball that Gloss swings over the top of for strike three. In the middle of five, there's still no score in this one. Here's Al Fellows leading off the bottom of the fifth for the Beavers. Still facing Perone on the mound. One one count now. Fouled straight back. One two count. Here comes the delivery, and it's a curveball. And the final pitch, a swing and a miss, a strikeout for Washington State. Here's Trey Markle. He's 0 for 1 on the day. One out in the bottom of the fifth, and Markle's going to drive this one deep to right field. That one is way back there, and it is going to bounce off the top of the wall. Markle's heading around first for second, and he's going to be in there with a stand-up double. Next batter for the Beavs is Nick Swayden. He's batting 249. He's 0 for 1 on the day. Swayden lines it into left field down the line. And it is played there by the left fielder onto the plate. That holds the runner at third. We got runners on the corners. For Jeff Maloney. With one out. First pitch is out of the strike zone. Second one is lined back and stabbed there by Perone. A nice catch for the second out of the inning. Here's Renee Rogers now. Harmless ground ball to the right side. It's fielded there by the second baseman. On to first for the out. We end five with no score. Thomas Gallegos, Tomas Gallegos at the plate. He takes the first pitch, a two-seamer over the inside corner of the plate for strike one. Curveball on the outside corner for strike two. Another three-pitch strikeout for Kyle Harville. He's having one of his best games of the year. Neil Musgrove now with one out. Here's the delivery from Harville. Chopper to the le left side, Banwert. Sidearms it on to first to Shinjo for out number two. And here is Joe uh, Muscos. Moscos. Moscos and La Casa. I don't know how you say that name. 0-2 count to Moscos. I'm just going with that. Moscos swings and misses. Chases that one out of the zone for strike number strike number three. And we go to the bottom of inning number seven. Devin Tomko now. Still no score, still Perone pitching for the Cougars. And Tomko lines it into left field for a base hit. Al Fellows now, batting 192. He came in for Ari Riesland early in the game. Ari Riesland left with an injury after sliding into second base. Fellows is gonna try to move the runner over to second. And he fouls that one back for strike two. And then he check swings at a curveball that's over the plate. And Perone is gassed, so they're gonna put in Portney. A new pitcher for Washington State. We'll see if the Beavers can take advantage of that. Nice leaping catch out there at second. And Nick Swayden comes to the plate. He's one for two today. There's two outs in the inning. He grounds it up the middle for a base hit. Runner's going to have to hold on there at second base. So the throw comes into third. Jeff Maloney to the plate now. He is the Beavers' third baseman. He's 0 for 2 on the day. He was the hero of yesterday's game with the walk-off home run. 0-2 count quickly to Maloney. And Maloney swings over the top of a four-seamer. And despite six hits on the day, the Beavers have not been able to scrape across a run. We go to the top of the eighth inning now. Harville still going strong for Oregon State. Breaking ball misses. 1-1 one, one count. 
Swing and a miss over the top of the splitter. It's a 1-2 count with two outs. Here in the eighth, and Harville with another strikeout gets out of the eighth inning still unscathed. And Jeff Banwert will come to the plate with two outs in the bottom of the eighth. And Banwert lines it. And a nice diving catch is made out there at second for Washington State. We still have no score, guys, and we're heading to the ninth inning. Dan Ellis into the plate for the uh, Cougars. Harville still pitching for the Beavers. Here's the fly ball out to right field. Tom goes underneath and he makes the catch. Brings up Nick Quick. Nick Quick is over three on the day. He swings over the top of a splitter. Here comes pitch number two of the at bat. Two seamer up and in. And the third pitch swung on and missed to the two seamer down and in. Carville, or, uh, Harville moving his pitches around very nicely here in this one. Here's the ground ball to Shinjo. Shinjo's going to step on the bag and that will end the inning. We go to the bottom of the ninth with no score. David Shinjo, batting 232. He's one for three today. Facing Portney still for the Washington State Cougars. Big high breaking ball does not break over the plate. It's a 2-0 count now. And the inside pitch is inside out and out to left field. Easy fly ball for Washington State, and that's the first out of the inning. Here's Devin Tomko. Grounds the changeup to the left side. On to first for out number two, and we are looking like we might be headed to extras if Al Fellows can't get something done here. Fellows, a chopper to short. And a nice play over to first, and we have free baseball here in Corvallis. We're going to be heading to the 10th inning. Here is Tomas Gallegos. Gallegos takes the splitter for strike one. Harville is still pitching. He is into the 10th inning here. Maybe starting to run out of gas, but we got one out in the 10th. Here's Musgrove. Musgrove misses a curveball. It's 0-1. Here's the second delivery from Harville. Two-seamer catches the inside corner. It's 0-2. 0-2 delivery. A splitter swung on and missed. And another strikeout for Harville. Here's Joe Moskos. Moskos. He's 0 for 3 on the day. Swings and misses at the curve. 0 1 count. Another delivery. Swung on and missed on the two seamer. And Harville is absolutely dealing. The splitter. Check swing, but he's rung up on strikes. We go to the bottom of the 10th. Trey Markle, the DH, comes to the plate. Still facing Portney. Cutter is upstairs. It's 1 0. This cutter catches the inside corner. 1-1 one, one count. Here's the delivery from Portney. Grounded to the right side. Diving play made at second. On to first for out number one. Here's Nick Swaden, the left fielder. Two for three and has a stolen base today. Swaden pops it up on the left side. Shortstop is underneath it. And barely has to move for out number two. Here's Jeff Maloney. Can he walk us off in back-to-back -back days? Strike one. Check swing is a cutter over the inside corner. Here's the 0-1 delivery. And Maloney pops this one up to the right side now. And the second paceman gets under that one for the out. We go to the 11th inning. Still tied at zero apiece. Harville still in in the 11th. And a base hit up the middle off of Harville. Rogers gets it back into the infield. Here is David Roberts, the second baseman. And Harville's out of gas. We finally go to the bullpen here and bring in Rodriguez. First pitch from Rodriguez. Washington State trying to bunt, and that one's fouled back to the screen. 0-1 delivery. Curveball breaks just around the plate. 1-1 count. This bunt is fouled down the left field line, and then a base hit up the middle. So runner moves into scoring position on the base hit. We got runners on first and second for Micah Gloss. He's 0-3 for 3 on the day with nobody out yet. And Micah Gloss is going to lay down a bunt, and he might beat it out. Maloney charges and cannot make the play. We've got the bases loaded with nobody out. Dan Ellison at the plate. Here's the delivery from Rodriguez. Ellison lofts it into left field. That one's going to be fair. Sweden misplays it, and it's going to roll all the way to the wall. And that is going to clear the bases. A bases-clearing double. And at the... End of Washington State's 11th inning. They lead 3 to nothing. We go to the bottom of the 11th. Beavers trying to make a comeback here. Renee Rogers down 0-2 after that one. That was fouled off. And then Rogers grounds it to the right side. Easy play at first. 
as he's going to beat Rogers to the bag for out number one. Here's Geno Washburn. He's batting 306. Delivery to Washburn. Check swing on the changeup. 0-1 count. Fastball misses low. Slider right over the heart of the plate. But I guess it missed low. Here's the drive deep to left field. That one is high. And it is going to be short of the warning track for out number two. Jeff Banwart, the last hope here for the Beavers to keep this game alive. He fouls off the first pitch. 0-1. Takes the curveball up high. It's a 1-1 count with two outs. Slider. This one catches the inside corner for strike two. That slider misses high. A 2-2 count. And here is a base hit into right field for Banwert. And that's going to bring David Shinjo to the plate to try to keep this game alive for Oregon State. Big breaking ball. Lofted into right field. That one's going to get down for a base hit. So we got runners at first and second, and that's going to bring the tying run to the plate in the form of Devin Tonko. He does have power. Not a great average, but he could hit one out. 1-0 pitch to Tonko. Slider inside. It's 2-0. Fastball right down the middle, taken for 2-1. Here's the 2-1 delivery. And Tonko grounds it to the right side, and this is going to end the game. Washington State takes the finale here in this three-game series from Corvallis. Oregon State falls three to nothing in this one, the final score. Washington State three runs on six hits. The Beavers no runs on eight hits. 17 strikeouts on the day for Kyle Harville, yet he does end up with the loss. And Ari Riesland's going to be out for a little while, so we put Fellows in his place in both lineups. Stanford beat Cal today, 7-1. We fall to Washington State, and UW beat USC 3-2 in the Pac-10. So we are all tied at the top of the Pac-10 at 13-8. Arizona State is 12-9. So we will head into the final series against UCLA after we play two non-conference games at Iowa. We head into that final series with UCLA tied with Stanford atop the division, or atop the conference, excuse me. So that'll be the next episode of Oregon State Baseball, Oregon State and UCLA from Los Angeles. Hope you'll join us then and see if we can get ourselves into the postseason. It'll be the final regular season episode. Guys, like, share, subscribe. Let people know that I'm doing a college baseball uh, series. And uh, catch us for the next one. Thanks, everybody.